Welcome to the OCI Grails QuickCast, bite-sized portions of Grails productivity tips to help maximize developer productivity with the framework. Grails QuickCasts are brought to you by OCI, the home of the core Grails development team and your source for professional support, project work, and training around the Grails framework. Grails QuickCasts are distributed in partnership with DZone, who help build knowledge and relationships to maximize your success. All right, in this QuickCast, I'm going to focus on some topics that are related to something that's, that's not the most flashy or exciting set of features provided by the framework, but it's something that most applications deal with. And there are a number of interesting tips and tricks and things to know about uh, around some of this. And that's what I want to focus on. So I want to start by taking a look at the application and, uh, and, and seeing what this application is, is doing. So I've got a form here where I can type in a, um, a, a band name and execute a search. And what just happened there, that brief pause, was uh, a REST call was made to, I, to the iTunes store um, to execute a search based on whatever I entered in there. And we get back some search results and we can do whatever we want to do with those results. Right, I can search for another band um, and these links take us out to the iTunes store and I can read more about this album and I can uh, I can buy the album from here and so forth. Uh, this particular album, by the way, happens to probably be one of my top five Desert Island kind of prog rock albums. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at the album Red by King Crimson. There's lots of great stuff there. But uh, that's what the application does. So I can enter in an artist name, execute a search, I get some search results back, and then the application can do uh, whatever it wants to do with the, with the search results. And uh, that's the application that I want to use to support a discussion around um, some particular features of the framework. So let's, uh, let's jump into the IDE and get right to it. All right, in the application, I've got one simple controller, and this is all the controller is doing. So this is the controller that is responding to, uh, when we fill out the search form and click search, this is the code that gets executed. So on line nine here, I'm simply delegating off to the iTunes, iTunes search service and asking it to do a search for me, and I'm gonna get back a list of albums, and then the list of albums is being put in the model that's returned on line 11 here, and, and that's used to generate the GSP. But uh, I want to focus on what's going on inside of this search method in the iTunes search service. Um, so remember that what's happening here when you fill out the form and execute a search is we're making a REST call out to the iTunes store. And I'm using the, the REST builder to initiate that, uh, uh, that REST call. Um, I don't want to get, uh, I don't want to be distracted by um, a discussion about how to interact with the REST builder and how to optimize um, interactions with that thing. Uh, so I'm going to keep that just as simple as it can be. What I really want to focus on is what's going on uh, at line 12 here, which doesn't look very interesting, but but uh, we're, we're going to be able to, That's there, there are some interesting things around this that I want to talk about. So what I've got on line 12 is I, I've hard coded this URL that is the URL that I want to send this REST call to um, th that will return uh, results, search results from the iTunes, uh, from the iTunes store. So right now the URL is hard-coded in the program and, and that's not great. I, I might want to get this out of the program and uh, define that as a config setting. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to open our application.yaml and in here I'll define a music search URL. Looks something like that. So all I've done is I've, I've copied and pasted or cut and pasted that URL out of the service and now it's a config setting. Right, so it's not hard coded in the program anymore, but I need some mechanism to I, I need to, to read that config setting um, and uh, in this service somehow because I'm going to need that URL when I when I make this rest call. So one way to go about this and a common thing that a lot of folks would do is I could have uh, the Grails application object injected into uh, into the service. And then down here, I could do something like this. I could refer to the config object that is associated with the Grails application and then do uh, something like that, right? Music.search URL, is that the name? Music.search URL, right? So that will work, right? So now I've got the benefits of, I've not hard-coded that URL in this service. 
Um, it's off in a config setting, and I could do some interesting things um, to dynamically load up those config settings at, at runtime. I can also override those config settings with system properties. Um, so, th so there are a number of benefits to getting that value um, out of, getting, getting that hard-coded value out of the service. And what I've got on line 15 there would work, but it's, it's not ideal. There are a number of reasons that's not a, uh, probably not the best solution. One is that that line of code is executing every time I execute a search, right? So every time I execute a search, I'm going out to the config and, and retrieving uh, music.search URL. And there's no reason to do that over and over again. Uh, presumably the URL is, isn't going to be changing while the application is running. So, so I really only need, for our purposes, I'm gonna say that I really only need to read that config setting uh, once. So what I've got here is functional, but it's, uh, it's not ideal because I'm, I'm loading the config setting over and over and over again uh, every, time a search is, every time a search is executed. And this is, this is a mistake, or this, this is something that I see a lot of folks do in Grails applications, and that is they've got code that is interacting with the config object um, during request processing. So that means we're interacting with the config over and over and over again. Uh, while the application is running. And usually there are at least uh, a couple of options to, uh, um, that would be a better idea than, than doing that. And I want to explore, uh, I want to explore some of those. All right, so I want to find a way to, or explore a couple of ways to not have to interact with that config object every time a search is executed. And one way to do that is I can implement an interface called Grails Configuration Aware and I need to implement the, the interface defines just one method. It's called set configuration. So the, the interface that I just implemented is Grails configuration aware, and you can see the, the package there. That interface defines this set configuration method. And the way this works is uh, there's a bean post processor in the, uh, in the application that will find all of the beans in the, in the application context that implement this interface. And for all of them, um, during bean initialization, this method will be called and the config object will be passed as an argument into this set configuration method. And this method is only being called once. It's being called once when the bean is being initialized. So this might be a better place to retrieve that uh, config setting and assign the results of that config setting to a property in this class. Uh, so let's see what that might look like. I'm gonna get rid of this Grails application object. I don't need that anymore. Uh, in here, uh, so we're not gonna need to initialize that there. So I've got a, a property called search URL, and I'm using that property inside of the search method. Um, so I need to initialize it before that search method gets executed. And this set configuration method is, uh, is one place where I might do that. So I might do the same sort of thing that we were doing before, right? I might do that. Um, so this is better than what we had before for this particular um, use case because I'm, I'm only retrieving the value once. So when the application starts up or, or whenever this bean gets initialized, this method will be called. I'm being handed the config object and I can do whatever I need to do with that. And in this case, what I'm doing is retrieving a configuration value from the config object and assigning it to a property in this class. And now when this search method gets executed over and over and over again, I'm not reevaluating the, con the, con uh, the config for each search, right? The, I'm only evaluating the config one time, and that's happening right here in the set configuration method. So this is better than what we had before with respect to that, but there's still some things that I could, could improve about this. So this technique for retrieving config settings from, uh, from the Grails config, uh, specifically the, the dotted notation here, where I can refer to co.music.search.url, and those just look like property access. That's convenient and it kind of lo looks cool. Um, it, it's, it's a neat feature, but there's some problems with that. Um, one is, uh, depending on what we're doing with this value, we can get some unexpected and kind of tricky to debug behaviors if music.search.url doesn't exist. Um, if we were doing type conversions, if, if we wanted some value other than a string or, or, or some, uh, if we're doing type conversions, there can be some issues with that. Th this is not, uh, this is really not the best way to retrieve values from the config setting. A better idea is to do something like this. You can say get property and then pass a string that represents the name of the property that you want. And um, optionally, you can specify a type 
and uh, the type conversion will happen for you. And then additionally, another optional thing is you can define, you can provide a uh, default value, right? So I'll do this. If the music.search.url uh, config setting does not exist, then this is the value that'll be returned. And there, there are several overloaded versions of this get property method. There's a version that just accepts the, uh, the key. You can specify a type if you want to do a conversion. You can specify a default value. You can specify just the default value, right? So, so most often when I'm using this method, what I'll do is I'll specify the type and then depending on the, on the situation, maybe, maybe I have a default value out here and, and maybe, I, maybe I don't. In this particular case, I'm not going to have a default value. Um, we're, we're going to assume that there really is a music search URL config setting defined. And, um, and I, want, I just want to retrieve that value. If, if that's the case, if, if you're retrieving the value of a config property that uh, really needs to exist or that you expect to exist, there's another set of these methods called get required property. And uh, that will throw an exception if the config setting does not exist. So I want to retrieve the music.search.url config setting. Um, and I, I'm saying if it does not exist, I expect that to be an error condition. I want an exception to be thrown. Um, so that the, the, this, this would probably make the most sense for this particular application. It's a required setting. I've defined it in the application.yaml at deployment time. We might override that value with a system property. But by the time line 35 executes, I expect there to be a music.search.url config setting. And this is a reasonable way to, to retrieve that value. Uh, so, so this is an improvement over what we had before uh, for a couple of, of reasons. One, um, all of the, the required property stuff that I, that I just described. And also, we're doing away with that, um, uh, that dotted notation. And we're not retrieving the config value over and over again for, for each resort, uh, for each each. Uh, each time we execute a search. But even this can, uh, for, for this use case, we can, we can improve on this uh, still a little bit more um, because the only reason that I want this config object is I want to retrieve the value of this config setting and just assign it to a value of a property in this class. This approach would, would make more sense if I wanted to retrieve a config setting or retrieve maybe a number of config settings and do something with them and I only wanted to do that once. So maybe I'm gonna retrieve some, some values from the config setting and do some math. And the result of that math, uh, maybe I wanna to assign to a property in this class, but I don't need the config settings themselves over and over again, right? I only need the config settings once. So if that was the case, then this would be a reasonable approach, right? Implement the set config method, set configuration method, have the config object passed as an argument, retrieve the values that you wanna interact with and do whatever you need to do with them and then you're done. You, you, you're never going to interact with those settings again. In our case, that's not what we're doing, right? We want to retrieve this config setting, and I want to use that config setting over and over again. I need the URL every time I execute a search. Um, so if, if, that's what I, if that's what I'm going to do, uh, the only reason I want access to this config object is to retrieve a config value that I'm going to assign to a property in this class, then there's an even better way to do this, and um, we'll take a look at that. All right, so let's see how we can get rid of this uh, kind of imperative logic here that is interacting with the config object. So I'm going to eliminate that set configuration method, and I'm not going to implement the Grails configuration aware interface. And um, instead, so, so I still need this property to be initialized, right? I need it to be initialized with whatever value is read from this uh, music.search URL config setting. Uh, I've got one too many dashes there. Get rid of that. Um, so I want the value of this music.search.url config setting to be read and uh, its value assigned to this uh, to the search URL property. So in, instead of doing that kind of imperatively in the set configuration method, another op option I've got is uh, I can use this value annotation that's provided by Spring. And in here I can use an expression that says music.search.url, right? So what that says is when this bean is being initialized, uh, assign a value to this, we're asking, asking the, the framework to assign a value to this property and the value should be um, whatever music.search, whatever the value of the music.search.url config setting is. So I, I don't have to interact with grails application.config, I don't have to implement configuration aware, I don't interact with the config 
uh, directly. I'm just expressing that I want this property to be initialized with the value of this config setting. And if I wanted to provide a default value here, I can. I can put a colon and then uh, I can hard code a default value out here. Uh, that's not what I'm going to do. I know that the setting is going to have a value because I've provided a, a value in application.yaml and uh, that value might be overridden by a system property or, or but uh, one way or the other, I know that it will have, uh, it will have a value before um, uh, when this bean is initialized. So that's the way that I would implement this. Let me stop the application and start it back up. Before I do that, let's do this. We'll say, let's just log something, log the value of that URL. Um, and start the application back up. All right, so now if we interact with the application, initiate a search. There we go, that looks like that worked. And we see this uh, output statement search URL is that value that, that really is what just came out of the application YAML. So this log statement and the fact that we got search results in the application are both evidence that uh, the config setting really was read and uh, injected into this, into this service. So we've seen a, a few different ways that I could have uh, initialized this search URL, right? I could have hard-coded the value in the, in the service. I could have uh, had the Grails application object injected into the service and then navigated from Grails application to config and, and, and retrieve the value that way. Uh, an improvement over that was to implement the Grails configuration aware interface and have the configuration object handed to the service at being initialization time and for some scenarios that will be the right thing to do but as i said before if all i want to do is retrieve the value of that property uh, that config setting and assign it to a property then what you see on lines 9 and 10 are probably uh, uh, would pro probably be the best solution for this particular use case Thank you for watching this episode of the OCI Grails QuickCast. For more information on how OCI can help you with Grails or any of these other practice areas, visit OCIweb.com or contact us at info at OCIweb.com. Follow our Twitter accounts at Object Computing and at Grails Framework. Also, read regular updates on the OCI Grails team blog at grailsblog.ociweb.com. Wow.